नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू एपिसोड नंबर नाइन ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग फाइन मैन फिजिक्स पॉडकास्ट रिचर्ड फाइन मैन हैड दिस एबिलिटी टू गिव यू अ फर्स्ट प्रिंसिपल्स एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ थिंग्स विच रियली जेल वेल द प्रॉब्लम आई फेल्ट in my school days in trying to understand the mathematics behind the physics was that mathematical concepts and constructions were not given in the right context i think the what's a scalar what's a vector what's a matrix all those things are right now i am understanding them from in a new light they are tools most of them are made by <clears throat> most of their uh, most of the part of that is just inventing or describing something new or developing something new and then finding out the truths about those entities mathematically and that's the context of those things they are not th- absolute truths about the nature of how things are they are just tools to understand the physics and in this case as well we are now starting the second chapter of the book understanding what's the book called uh, lectures of lectures on physics by richard feynman um, volume 2 chapter 2 differential equations in vector fields is that what it's called uh, in physical fields or something like that it's the chapter starts with explaining why um do we need to understand the mathematics behind the physics but also need to understand the physics behind the mathematics there are two ways of looking at things we started with the, the heuristical approach where we uh, think of things like fields and vector uh, fields and these um um charges in space and these uh, the 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 flux and the surface um the the, the surface and the the the, the curvature the circular you know all those constructions all those ways of looking at electromagnetic fields that is that comes under heuristics heuristical approach but there is this other approach going straight to abstract mathematics by trying to solve the differential equations and it, it's it's important to understand how to solve the differential equations because they are precise and they are more fundamental right but it's also necessary when you solve those equations that you come back to the heuristics and try to understand the characteristic of those equations and those solutions what how does the solution turn out to be and try to build a picture in your mind of uh, how this thing functions and try to make an intuition behind it if you do, if you don't do that if if you're purely mathematic uh, mathematical in nature and you stick to the differential equations and you say this is the truth this is how the truth is this is uh, you solve this and you get the answer and i don't need to understand the physical aspect of it well then nothing is building up on that how are you building up on this these these are just these everything we use are just tools right these these differential equations are tools to understand something but if you stick to the tools itself and you don't stop and go beyond the tools and don't try to get the imprecise nature and version of the um of understanding you will lose something it both are important the 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 preciseness of the differential equations understanding that is important but the other part is also important right 
and that's how the um the chapter starts and i am so happy to read that paragraph because i'm stuck in my other podcasts in the in the consciousness podcast because of mathematics and here it is this paragraph that explains to me who uh, that it's going to teach me some mathematics this chapter is going to teach me some mathematics from um a physical understanding uh, and this is what i needed right now some more confidence in the maths and if i do this chapter i might get more confident and more comfortable with some of the mathematics um used in other parts of things that i want to understand so i'm really happy that this chapter is here and i started uh, reading uh, the first part and i'll explain this is very interesting something new that i learned uh, just in the last 15 minutes think of um so we, in this whole electromagnetism um uh subject you are considering a field right what is a field it's just in the most abstract terms it's just a a value of some quantity in space simple you have a think of it this way <clears throat> you have a big block of um wood or something stone let's say big block of stone that you are heating from below and you're providing heat to it so after 15 minutes of doing that the lower part of the stone would be um high temperature very high temperature but the up, upper part would be less temperature but and the middle of that going from um bottom to top the temperature is going to have a different value in each of those points right in each of those points the 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 temperature will have a different value so it's a field of temperature it's a temperature field right it's it's called a scalar field because at every point there is this one value of the temperature okay that's called a scalar field that's it it's simple when you when you think of the term field you think of these these three dimensional uh spaces where at every point there is a different value of some quantity in a, in a scalar field we'll talk about the vector fields that's also very easy nothing to do but think of the scalar field right now when you are thinking of the scalar field this block of stone having different temperature from the bottom to the top there would be these areas there these points with same temperature right right even though it's changing everywhere there is going to be some places where the temperature is the same maybe those areas may maybe the if it's an ideally made stone it's a smooth stone uh, the heat transfer is the same in every direction then you can think of it as uh, an equidistant away from the heat source this area this surface that is the same distance from the heat source it is getting the same heat and thereby has the same temperature that's that's called a isothermal field in this case it's it's a it's a, sorry an isothermal surface it's called an isotherm in that field so inside this scalar field there will be the surfaces which have the same value called contours or contours contours we we have that in maps also right uh, contours on, on a on a mountain top um, on a, on a on a map of a mountain show the the height constant height of the uh, of the mountain and that's a scalar field right in the same example you can also 
understand the vector field what's a vector field in this case a vector field would be the flow of heat in that block think of it at every point in that block of stone there is a temperature of course that's a scalar field but there is a flow of heat in some direction okay it that value has a direction also apart from being <clears throat> it also is is uh, has a scalar part the heat the quantity of flow the amount of heat flow is different in different points but also the direction of heat flow is different in different points and that is called the vector field all right there are these equations that i'm kind of scared of the dot product of two vectors and the cross product of two vectors and the dot product of the cross product of two with three vectors and then the uh, the cross product of the cross product of two vectors and uh, you know and uh, um scary scary looking things but i have hope that i will understand some of it i'll try to understand visualize slowly and peacefully and that's how you learn i guess right in a mid middle aged mathematical training i don't know what that was um so this is an exciting chapter and i'll see you tomorrow or day after or whenever uh, bye bye thanks for listening like and share uh,